In this talk, we'll discuss causal models and using them for forecasting demand. So causal models, as opposed to time series, assume that we know something about some underlying factor that is causing the demand. And so we use these type of models when we think demand is correlated with some known and measurable environmental factor. It's important that the factor obviously is known, because if we don't know about it, how can we use it? But it's also important we can measure it, and we can measure it in advance. It doesn't help me if I find some highly correlated factor, but I can't determine it until two weeks after my forecasted demand. I have to know it in ahead, ahead of time, in advance. So we typically say that demand, and we always use this as y, y is a function of some variables, x1, x2, up to xk, where we have k explanatory variables. And we say that y is a dependent variable, because this demand, or y, is a function and depends upon these independent variables. And these are those environmental factors. So they're independent in that they, they should be independent from each other. They shouldn't have any relationship to each other, but individually they will contribute somehow to understanding the correlation of demand. So let's do some examples. Let's look at some possible cases. So these are disposable diapers. And we might want to think, OK, what are some factors? What are some underlying reasons why we'd see demand increase for disposable diapers? And we might think uh, in a certain region, we might look at the, the uh, birth rate. The more births there are, the more children there are, probably there are going to be more diapers. So maybe I can look at something that correlates the births to disposable diapers. I can also possibly think about household income, because higher household incomes means I can probably afford disposable diapers, which might cost a little bit more than traditional or cloth-based. Then here, I another example, and this is not just macaroni and cheese. This is a discount or a promotion. You see here, there's a little coupon next to it that says, save 55 cents. So what are we doing here? We're trying to forecast the demand of a promoted item. And this is important because in many consumer packaged goods, or CPG, industries, promotions can account to 40 to 50 percent of their total sales. A lot of things move under a promotion. So we want to be able to forecast what's the impact of different factors that we run in our promotion. How will that affect the demand? So we can think of, you know, one obviously is the price. How much am I discounting it? That should, the more I discount it, the more we expect demand to go. Where I place it in the store, um, surprisingly, where you place something really dramatically impacts the amount of sales, especially if you put it at an end cap, which is at the end of an aisle, you'll see an increase in sales. And also the number of advertisements and where I run them. So I can think of three factors, and there are probably many more, but each of these probably contribute to increasing demand of a promoted item. Let me give you one more example. This one's a little different. Um, we, here's a car. It's a front quarter panel and a front door panel that's been damaged. And so the idea is, how can I forecast the demand for spare parts, specifically um, repair doors and, and quarter panels? And interestingly, you can see a lot of correlation between the weather and, and specifically snow. When there's snow conditions, people get into fender benders and they tend to drive the demand for these types of car parts. So you could actually do your forecast based on what you think the snow is going to be or the ice going in because that drives the demand. But these are just three examples. We'll use many different examples where you can use a causal model and what you're trying to do is relate some known factor to your demand. So what will we do in this talk? We'll do five things. We'll talk about uh, simple linear regression. I'll introduce the concept. I'll show how to do it in spreadsheets. I'll show and introduce multiple linear regression. We'll talk about how to transform different variables and models. And then finally, we'll wrap it up by talking about the quality of the fit of your model and how valid it is. All right, let's get started.